Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So today's video is going to be a card featuring the gorgeous Luscious Labels printed vellum. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so first of all, I sound a lot better. There's a lot less croak in my voice. So I'm hoping that I'm okay now. Thank you to all of the people that sent lovely messages wishing me um, a quick recovery. Thankfully, I'm all good. Um, so, what I thought I'd do today is make a card using vellum as the sort of star of it. I'm a little unsure how I'm doing all of it, but I'm going to give it a good old shot. So I'm going to start off with a card base. This is a top folding card base, just a normal Australian size. I'm going to grab out my Infinity Ovals. I swear I bought these ages ago, and I mean to use them, and I forget. So... We're going to use them today, and I want this to sort of be my little window. What I'm trying to decide is if I want to use, because I also want to do a bit of a frame. So if I want to do that size frame, or if I want it to be a slightly wider frame, and that's I'm have to work this out now so that I make sure that my frame is the same size as my window. Just excuse the sniffing. I'm going to try really hard not to do it, but sometimes it's a bit of a no. It needs to be the slightly thinner one. Sometimes it's a bit of a reflex and you sort of don't mean to do it and you do it. So apologies if I sniff. There we go. All right, so that's going to be the frame shape. So I'm going to take the biggest one out for now, put that over to the side because I don't want to get it mixed up. And then this is going to be how we're going to cut our little window out. So I'm just going to grab a bit of washi tape to hold this down. So I'm just making sure it's exactly where I want it. And we'll get in the trusty die cut machine. Now the only thing to remember here is that you don't want to keep the card folded. You need to open the card up before you run it through the machine. Obvious, but you have no idea how many times I've done it, so you know. So we'll open that up and we'll just run this straight through. And that'll pop out our little circle. Sorry, oval. I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to need it again in a minute. So when it comes to putting vellum down, all of us know the hardest part is making sure that you can't see it, you can't see the glue. So what I'm going to do, it's okay, I'm going to fix the front anyway. So I'm going to put the vellum down over the front and then cover the front up. You can do it over the back and have it popping up through the back, but then you've got to cover the back up so that it doesn't look bad. By covering the front, which I'm going to fix anyway because it's got all these marks on it, I feel like I'm going to get a better result. So this is the printed acetate, not printed acetate, printed vellum from Luscious Labels. This is the eucalyptus one. I got a bunch of these at Picture to Page and I love them. They're so huge. Uh, the other ones I have though are more Christmassy, so I might use those ones a bit more at Christmas time. And then I'm going to cut this before I put it through the, um, through the trimmer. I'm going to cut it to be just a little bit smaller, so I'm going to cut it to the um, 10 inch line here, or sorry, the 4 inch line here. So it's going to be a little bit smaller than my front, and that way it'll all get covered up nicely. So I'll just put that in the trimmer, cut it. Just making sure that this is going to sit right. So far, so good. And then I'm just going to mark it with a pencil where I want to cut the bottom bit. There you go. And then we've got our little window. Now, my personal opinion is that it does look slightly better coming up through the back. It's always so hard. I think it, uh, righto. it does look slightly better coming up through the back. I'm going to cover the front anyway because I need to fix that up. But then we'll just have to work out how we disguise the front. Actually, I don't mind the vellum sort of showing on the inside. It's just more of the... We'll fix it in a minute. I'll fix it in a minute. Oh, I love when I change my mind halfway through a card. So the easy part here is just adhering this down because we are going to cover it. You don't need to be too perfect with this. So just 
glue all the way around make sure you hit right on the edges or as close to the edges as you can so that you don't get too much sort of side wiggle I hate when my paper pops up on the side and I'm just making sure then that I've got this the, the right way so the good thing about this particular bit of printed vellum is that it's not really all that different on either side like if you put it upside down you couldn't tell I can only just tell but I'm going to try and make sure I put it up the right way so just sticking that down go and there we've got oh damn I love vellum it's just such a pretty just such a pretty way to make a cut can't leave it like this though I could but I'm not going to so I'm going to grab this paper pack from My Favourite Things. I haven't used this for ages. I found it when I was organising my 6x6 stash. I'm going to grab this gorgeous dark green. So I've got yellow. Well, maybe I don't have any of the dark green. I'm sure I did. There it is. Sorry. I knew I had a piece. Because I feel like it fits... With this, it, it's about the same size. It's not exactly the same size. Now, depending how careful you can be with this, if you want to try and go and do it so that you cut the exact same size as the front and then line up just the oval, you can do that. I'm not that clever. I know I'm not that clever. So I'm not even going to attempt it. I'm going to try and put this sort of slightly over to the side. Let's just see if I can mildly line this up. This is the only part. I should have cut them both at once. I really should have. I'm squidging that into the spot and I'm just using the washi tape to just hold that down. Let's just squidge over a little bit because if I can avoid wasting all of it, I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to flip the O. Oh, ah, might need a little bit more tape. This is probably a really bad way to do this. If anyone knows an easier way, please let me know. So again, I'm putting that back in its little spot. You'll feel it, it'll pop straight in. The hardest part is honestly keeping it on the bit of washi tape. Okay, I think I've got that there. There we go. So then I can take out the card and can stick that back down. I'm hoping that that works. I can't guarantee it, but I'm gonna give it a try. Scared doing it on the only bit of that paper that I have, but if I mess it up, I've got other paper I can use. So just rolling that through, and then just very gently picking up that washi tape, especially on the outside, because that's the bit we're going to use. Okay. Oh, I love that. Love that. And I'm just lining this up. We're going to put a frame around the outside here, so if it's not 100% perfect, it's okay. And then you're going to use that washi tape again to hold this down while I then trace out on the back where I need to cut. So I just want to make sure that my top is flat because that's the only part of this that I can't fix for want of a better word. Everything else I can just sort of trim but the top needs to be flat. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. And like I said, I can fix the little bit at the top that I can see and everything else will get covered up by the frame. All right, so while we're talking about the frame, let's get back in that original size one that we did and then the one that's slightly bigger. This is the fun of infinity dies is that you can use them to make frames. The only thing I need to know with infinity dies, those people who know, who've been using them for a long time, what do I do with the really little ones? I've never used anything smaller than like... And obviously, I usually use squares and circles, but I think I don't have anything ever used anything smaller than like this one. So, if someone can tell me what I'm supposed to do with the really small ones, that would be great. 
So I'm grabbing some more washi tape and I'm going to hold, I'm making my frame shape on my mat and then I'm sticking these together with the washi and then I can stick it down onto a piece of cardstock. Now to give this a little bit of a zhuzh, zhuzh um, I'm going to use a bit of gold mirror cardstock. I'm using mirror for two reasons. Number one, it's not where I normally go. I usually stick with my matte or my glitter, but I want to team this up with a couple of littered gemstones and these ones are mirror. So for that reason, I'm going to try the mirror shape. Did I cut that too small? I did. What an idiot. It's alright. I have the other bit, which is a bit bigger. So, my washi tape does not like me, but that's okay. Good thing is it's keeping everything together. And the good thing about this is if you did want to do two or three to stack these up, really easy to do now that you've got that stuck together. I think I'm going to be happy with just the one this time. Oh, now. No. I was thinking that I would put some double-sided sticky down. Um to make that easier but I think it'll actually be much easier to line up with just some glue okay so here we've got our little frame I'm just pulling it out okay oh, I so love that part of me also really wants to put something down behind it but I haven't worked that out yet now if you're a person who really likes the the texture that cutting with dies gives you you can leave it just as is if you are someone that likes to make them a bit flatter grab yourself out for your scoring tool at this point and just give it a bit of a rub but I kind of like the texture sometimes you sort of look at a shape and you go why aren't you lining up and then stupidly enough it's just because it's upside down but this is not lining up and it's kind of bothering me I really don't like it when I can see the inside of the window I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just driving me a bit nuts. And I'm sure I can stick it so that it will sit in the right spot. But I don't understand why it just isn't sitting in the right spot. It just should. It shouldn't have stretched the paper or anything. gonna cope with it and if I need to trim off a little bit on the inside of the window I'll do that all right so I think the first thing I need to do is put the the front on and then I can build up the next step so I'm going to use lick uh, sorry glue dots for the front and then we'll use liquid glue for the frame sorry the fact that it's not sticking right is kind of thrown me a little bit. Now I'm going through my head trying to work out what I'm going to do. Um, I want lots of glue on this. I don't want it to accidentally come up. So I'm just going a little over the top. Side note, if you wanted to, you could turn this into a shaker very, very, very easily. I just don't want to do a shaker today, but you could do it without any kind of a problem. So I'm just lining that up. Can trim off any excess in a minute if there's a little bit hanging around on the sides that's fine oh, I love that. and like I said we're gonna fix the fact that the tops not quite right and there is a little bit of excess hanging around I was sure this card was gonna be so simple now if you are someone that gets fussy with edges Grab your trimmer out and make sure that this is straight if you want to do it. I'm happy to just go with the card base because I know that was straight. And just trim this back to fit the card base. But up to you. Some people really like that really straight, perfect line. I do too. But when it's this skinny, I feel like sometimes it's just not worth it. Although my Tim Holtz trimmer does better at any other straight skinny lines than any other trimmer I've ever tried. Okay, yes, 
because I still think that looks okay. While I've got the trimmer out, I'm just going to do one more thing. And I'm deliberately using the piece that hasn't gone through. No. Yeah, no. Um, I'm deliberately using the piece that hasn't gone through the die cut machine because that way it hasn't got any um, imprints or scars, I like to call them, but imprints. And I'm just going to trim this down. I just want a really skinny kind of line of this cardstock. I'm just making sure it's straight first by just trimming off a little bit. And it's going to be it's going to be about half half a quarter of and whatever half one of these squares are roughly. Don't mind if it's not 100% perfect. I can cop that. Not bad. They're about they're about there. So we'll put those at the top and the bottom and that'll kind of hide that frontage. I feel like I'm the only one that's going to notice the fact that the thing's popping out. So we're just going to go ahead and stick this down. This is my little precision glue that I got from Picture to Page. Using liquid glue for two reasons. Number one, it's going to give me the ability to just wiggle this around until it's right. So I might be able to get it to do its thing. Maybe it's not perfectly lining up because this isn't perfectly flat. Just a thought. We'll see. Um, so it'll give me time to wiggle it, which my dots will give me, but not as much. It's not quite as forgiving. I'm going to stick that um, just as much as I possibly can and just giving it a bit of a wiggle, just to try and get it to sit as close to that frame, that hole as I possibly can. I'm also being careful not to push too much on it because I don't like when you lose that mirror look by having a bit of glue on there, which I've done a couple of times. That's not bad. I can I can see it, but I don't think anyone else will. And then for the top and the bottom, I just want to add in just these little details. Just a strip across the top and a strip across the bottom. It'll hide the top, that's the first one, and it'll just add a little bit of something. So I'm just making sure it hasn't stuck the pages together, which it hasn't, or the card base together, and that it's flat, which it is. I was going to say I could probably use the same bit of cardstock, but not quite. And then like I said, this is going to hide the fact that I wasn't quite perfect on the top. I love this little glue thing, by the way. I wish my hands were a bit more steady so that I could make sure that it didn't wobble quite as much. But yeah, so for the top bit, I'm just making it so that I can't see anything white and then I'm just manipulating it a little bit. I've got a little bit too much glue stuff on that, but that's all right. It'll be fine. So the only problem with mirror cardstock is that sometimes you get that glue loogie on the outside, which I just can't stand. Oh my goodness. All right, that's just lovely. It would look lovely with the like another frame, but I'm not going to do that. I do want to add a little bit of something else to this. So I'm grabbing out, this is the anemone, and then, um, I hate that word, collection from Luscious Labels. It's the one that sort of matches this absolutely gorgeous vellum. And I'm just having a look through the dies, the die cut, sorry, just to see if there's something here that's going to just fit close because I don't want to take away from how lovely this is I am leaning towards red though I always feel like the red just looks a little bit better and I am kind of thinking I wanted it at the bottom I do have a whole other packet but these ones are more wreaths yeah they are I just think that one's a bit big it's lovely it's just a bit big which is the same as that one the cool thing with these die cuts is that you can stack them up so if you don't can't find a little something that you love just as it is. You can grab two of the little single ones, maybe even a spare white one, and then I've got some foliage up here as well. And you can sort of build your own little die cut. But I kind of like, oh, it needs to be a bit good in that one. I kind of like that one. I think that one, I'm stuck between going too big and too small. The other thing I need to do here before I get too excited is just work out what sentiment I'm going to use. I'm again going to make it very easy for myself. 
and I'm going to use the sentiment collection from Luscious Labels. I'm just thinking I may um, foil it because these can be foiled which is one of my favorite things just so it's got a bit of pop. Part of me wants to put it straight in the middle which I'm not going to do. Um, I'm going to make it say celebrate because I want I don't want it to be a birthday card but it can be it's just a little bit easier to make it a birthday card if it says celebrate. I am going to have that die cut sit exactly there and then I'm just working out where I'm going to put that celebrate. I think that's the spot. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and foil this. I'm just going to use normal gold foil, nothing fancy. Run it through my laminator and I'll be right back. Alright, my laminator is a little noisy, but I think it'll be okay for me to just do this while I'm sitting here. Because that takes a while to heat up. So I'm going to put on, I just feel like it just needs a little bit of foam. Not a lot, but just a little. So this is just um, really skinny foam tape. So just a tinsy little bit on the side and then I feel like I don't need it on the frame I feel like it can just sort of get tapped on the edge here so I'm just gonna put just a smidge in here and just a smidge in here I'm just gonna let it sit there for a sec while I take off this backing paper this is always my scariest thing I'm lining that up I want it to be tapped at the top I don't mind if it doesn't get tapped at the bottom just take that little bit off and that way the other sort of bonus for that is there's still no glue on the inside here you don't see it and then that celebrate thing will hit here and then I can put a little bit more glue on the edge here because we'll use foam tape to put that up too all right last thing while my sentiment's still laminating grabbing my pickup sticks. I'm going to put a couple of these gemstones around the place. So these are my pink fresh ones. I'm very into gemstones at the moment in case anyone hadn't noticed. I can't find my little trays. I did some reorganizing in here the other day and I have reorganized my way into not knowing where my little trays are but that's okay. Let's put a couple out on here. Uh, this is my um, jewel picker. I have got a new pickup stick coming because this one's kind of lost its stick now. It's not, it doesn't done too, do too bad of a job, but it's just not quite perfect. So I'm going to stick with a little group of three. I think I'll go on the other side though. Oh, I feel like I need the sentiment. Urgh. It's nearly done anyway. I'll wait till the sentiment's done. Okay, sentiment done. never get old. So I'm just deciding if I want to put the celebrate up on a bit of glue to foam tape as well. I think I do. It's still just the skinny foam tape so it's not super thick stuff. Poking that in here a little bit because I want it to sit sort of just underneath but I still want it to be straight ish. I need a little bit more tape under there. So I'm just removing the backing off this bit and then just squidgy it in there. Squidgy is my word of the day in case anyone hadn't noticed. Alright and then I just need to work out if I want to put any more baubles on than that. Put these ones down first and then I'll decide. I was thinking I'd put them sort of more up the top here but they just sort of ends up looking lopsided. There's something about that that's really pretty. Now the only other thing I'm trying to work out if I want to do so the only downside to using, it's bugging me, when I put that bit of foam tape in I squished it a little bit and it wasn't sitting flat, so I just, there we go, pulled it out and made it flat. Um, 
when you open this and you put your personal message in, I think I'm okay with it the way it looks on the inside. I think that's okay. But what I am sort of thinking about is when you open it, like if you write in here, it's going to be able to see it straight from the inside. So I'm going to put, I don't know if I've got any pastel green paper. Hold on. So I've just grabbed this bit. This is from, it's from a Crafter's Choice collection from Kayser Craft. No, that's the wrong kind of green. And I don't think any of these greens are going to quite work. No, too pastel. All right. Well. And these are regular, regular colored ones. I think that's too dark. So I just grabbed another six by six paper pack. This is watercolor wishes from Lawn Fawn. I don't think this green is going to match that green. I think it's going to be the wrong type of green. So I'm just going to put just a white sort of paper insert in there. So this is just a piece of plain white paper, nothing fancy. And I'm just going to cut it to be, oh, I'm going to fold it first. And then cut it to be again just slightly smaller than we had it before so before I remember we were about four inches so if I cut it to about that size and I'll just trim off the excess at the bottom I haven't done an insert before first and only time and that'll sit in there like that and it'll sort of have that now you've got the white bit behind it and you can then have your personal message there so it'll sort of hide everything. I'm quite happy to have that stuck, like stuck stuck, but it might be cool to have it. Alright, let's do something, we're going to do something different anyway. I'm going straight down along that crease line with just some liquid glue, just trying to stay as straight as I possibly can, which for me is not straight at all. And I'm going to squeeze this in, okay, and fold it down, and if I leave this for a couple of minutes, I think that'll stick it's already sticking so we're good so now you've got your sort of it'll stick more while I'm finishing this up but then you've got your little insert in there so you don't accidentally kind of let everybody on the outside see your little personal message and if you want to to which I am gonna do I'm gonna stick in just an extra little die cut on the inside Actually, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do two things I'm gonna put the little insert on the inside but I'm also I think I'm gonna use gray but I'm not sure. No, that's not grey, that's what it is. It's blue-grey. I'm slightly lighter grey. This is one of my um, Staedtler pens. I'm just going to hand draw and I want to, I'm doing it hand drawn on purpose because I want the, the wonkiness and the non-perfection of it. Just do a little frame around the outside. Just, I'm actually going to stick that down first. I love when the border goes down behind the little image so it looks like it's sort of seamless. Sometimes I really like a, a hand drawn little border. All right and I'm going to leave it at that. So much more you could do with this stuff but just to show you the vellum is very much the star here and I've tried to make it so but you could use it for shakers. You can use it for other color other shaped windows you can do squares you can do circles you can do triangles whatever a simple die cut a sentiment a couple of gems boom you're done now i probably made this look a lot more complicated than it actually is but you get the gist and it's just it is so pretty and so classic and i just i adore how easy that is using some awesome stuff from luscious labels and i love how easy that is using just a piece of vellum and a couple of die cuts from luscious labels so that is it for this one. I hope you did enjoy it. Please give it a big old thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can find me on any of my socials. They're all listed down below. Or of course you can leave me a comment. I hope you guys have an absolutely awesome, awesome, awesome rest of your day. And I'll catch you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.